So to kick off the session uh, uh, now, uh, we have Gratify. And uh, please give a warm welcome to the Gratify MD and CEO, Ian Dunstan. Uh, good morning. Obligatory disclaimer. Uh, yeah, at its basis, uh, Gratify is a loyalty and rewards uh, business uh, with a, a, a platform that we've developed, which we believe is, if not the best in the world, very close to it. And the beauty of our business at the moment is that there's a lot of stories going around that loyalty and rewards is what's saving retail at the moment. So we're probably the opposite of mining. We're actually in the dry patch at the moment, not being affected by the weather. Um, the business is actually booming as a consequence of tough economic times. You know, people are continually looking for, for bargains. So we are actually the largest by accounts lo loyalty management platform in Australia and New Zealand. We have 17 million accounts on our system which, if in this world of data, is actually a gold mine. We recently signed a contract with EML Payments and their head of payments said, you realise that you're sitting on the fourth largest database in Australia after Telstra, Coles and Woolies. So he said, you're sitting on a gold mine. So in this age of data, being able to mine that data and come up with consumer patterns, is a very, very valuable asset. Yeah, we've got very strong revenue growth with 23% CAGR over the last couple of years. Yeah, our platform is you know, cheap and quick to deploy, so bring, we can bring revenue on stream very, very quickly. The market is, you know, people don't realise it's you know, an over $5 billion market just in Australia that we're dealing with on an annual basis. And if you think about it, there's not a retailer, not a hospitality, not, not uh, utilities. Every industry has a loyalty program and a rewards program. The only people that probably don't is mining companies. But everybody else literally has. So our market that we can address is pretty much every other country, uh, company in Australia. But within that as well, we have a large number of, yeah, we have about 70 existing clients and we probably only, at this point in time on average, depending on which client, only actually access 25 to 30% of our existing client base to generate revenue. So we've got internal growth opportunities as well. So as I said, the market itself is growing at greater than 13% CAGR. It's a massive market. At the moment it's fragmented with over 100 players in the market, uh, which gives us great opportunity to consolidate within that space. And the global market is about 27 billion. So as I said, it's everyone in retail, energy, tourism, sport, you know, we're doing very well in automotive, tech, health, financial services, hospitality. All of these companies have a loyalty program. All of these companies are in our market space. Now some of you may have read just in Friday's and Saturday's Fin Review the story about Maya. That's saying basically their loyalty program on its own pulled their business out of the depths of despair. So without loyalty, Maya may well have folded. And we see that across multiple brands. I spoke to someone at Country Road who said 80% of their transactions, their turnover, is linked to their loyalty program. Yeah, and we're seeing, interestingly, you know, the new head of Maya is the ex-head of loyalty from Qantas. Yeah? All these new companies, the new CEOs, are coming out of loyalty programs because that's where the growth is. That's what, you know, in tough times, I think everyone has heard those adages that, 
my numbers probably aren't quite right, but it, you know, it costs $10 to get a new client and $3 to hold on to the ones you've got. Now, when times get tough, marketing departments at all these big organisations are going, we haven't got the funds to go and attract new customers, but how do we retain the ones we've got and get those to spend more money with us? And that's what this story about Maya from the Pin Review on Friday says, you know, businesses are hugely relying on their loyalty programs to retain and grow their revenue. Now we are smack in the middle of that space. Yeah, and the largest Australian company in that space. The rest are global organisations. And when you think about these things, you know, the, and we've heard it from every presenter, local knowledge is worth its weight in gold. You know, for us to deal with local organisations and understand local issues is a big plus for us. You know, if we look at our business currently, we have about, as I said, there's over 17 million accounts on our system across 70 enterprise clients. We run the platforms for them that you know, your points and your gold, silver, bronze, all those sorts of things that a loyalty program has. We also have the side of the business that provides discounted movie tickets, theme parks, dining, attractions, gift cards, travel, all those sorts of things to reward people for their programs. And you know, if we look at our client list, it's a sort of who's who. Yeah, you know, we're just about to roll a big program out with Westpac. You know, HBF, we're in health insurance. Our big area is probably the motoring organisations. RACV is our biggest client. We have RAC in Perth and RAA in Adelaide. I'm very hopeful RACQ and NRMA are not far behind. Um, but also across retail, we have the whole of the West Farmers Group and we have Coles. You know, into super, we have Rest Super, one of the biggest super funds. Um, you know, so we have a who's who of client list and that continues to grow. As I said, if we look at this business four years ago for us, we were turning over around two and a half million. Today we're turning over nearly 40 in two and a half years. And that just continues to grow and grow and grow. And we're onboarding more and more clients every week. Yeah, across that, the two we have the two parts of the business, as I said, the loyalty platform with the gold, silver, bronze and the points and does the admin and the emails and looks after the client's data. And then we have the fulfilment side, which is, is lower margin, but higher turnover. So across the business, it averages around 20% margin business. Um, it goes like clockwork every month. The same clients spend the same amount of money with us. It is seasonal. <laughs> Christmas, of course, is very big for us as hopefully Easter in the next week. A very high revenue months for us as people yeah, will go to SeaWorld, go to the movies, buy retail, go to restaurants. So Easter is a very good time for us. Yeah, recently, I mean, not recently, yeah, late last year, last year we, we signed an $8 million contract with RACV for platform and rewards. Uh, and that's three plus three plus three contract. Um, and that's the size of deal and the size of clients that we're dealing with. Um, we then signed with Club Connect, which is another software company that provides RACQ and NRMA to look to move and pick up their 3.7 million members there, which will take our total database up to nearly 21 million. Now you say it's not 21 million out of Australia, it's 27 million. We have lots of people in two or three or four. When you have that bigger clients, they're in multiple programs. Particularly for us in Western Australia, you have Alinter Energy, you've got HBF Health and RAC Automotive Club. So there's, a, there's hundreds of thousands that are in all three of those. 
So, but it's 21 individual accounts that we can mail to, we can access, we can make offers to, um, and you know, we have their data. You know, the last, as I said, when we go from two and a half million less than three years ago to 40 million, you know, we're rolling out a lot of new clients. Meat and Wine Co. is one of our new big clients, well, not new, that's it, oh, one of our clients that we're, we're rolling out to their new restaurants. They're opening, they have 42 restaurants globally and they're going to 70. Um, Cornerstone Health is a very interesting project for us. 17 health centres, 325,000 patients um, across the eastern seaboard and they're adding more and more and more medical centres. With our software, they've automated the check-in process. Actually, at the moment, we built them uh, automatic check-in, so pre-populates Medicare, whatever insurer you're with, to save time and paperwork. They're actually moving to kiosks, so you'll just come in and tap your phone and go straight through. So they can see 17% more patients in a day by having less paperwork. So our systems more than pay for themselves multiple times over. And just recently, like two weeks ago, very importantly for us, is we signed an agreement with EML Payments to put our content up onto their salary sacrifice platform. They have nearly half a million people on that, where people can get $6,250 of tax deductible expenditure. Uh, and we're loading about three or 400 of our products onto that platform. Now that platform currently turns over $2.5 billion a year. So I could do the maths, if I get a 1% market share, I'll make nearly $2 million out of it. So I don't do the maths beyond 1%. Um, so that's a very exciting new opportunity for us. Hasn't made us one cent yet, won't go live for another four to six weeks. But we're rolling out things like fuel offers, movie tickets, a whole bunch of things uh, to go up in phase one of that. As I said, you can see our revenue has grown dramatically and we believe it will continue, maybe not at that pace, that might be a little bit too much, but uh, we'll continue to grow strongly, just looking at the pipeline of opportunities we're rolling out. As I said, I've got no revenue in there for EML and I think that will be very, very good for us. Um, other things like yeah, RACQ, we haven't signed it yet, but we're very hopeful we'll get them as a client soon too. So we're onboarding new clients, our revenue is growing strongly. We have a database, not quite second to none, but very close to it. Uh, and a lot of opportunities within that data space. In terms of the business going, you know, the near term, we see revenue continuing to grow and also our expenses coming down as projects go live. It's a little bit, I make the analogy like construction. At the moment, we've got so many big projects on the go, we're burning money, trying to get them live. But once they go live, the costs come down dramatically and our profitability goes up dramatically. So, you know, the future looks very bright for us and we're in a particularly good sector at the moment. It's counter cyclical. It's not affected by the weather. <laughs> um, well, it is a little bit, but not dramatically. Um, so we're very happy where we are. Our market share is growing. Um, everything at the moment is going. Yeah, we have a, a nice tailwind. Thanks, Ian. Great presentation. Any questions to the floor? There we go. There's some of this just gentleman over here. You mentioned that uh, you're one of the largest in Australia, but it would be uh, uh, rationalisation. Have you seen yourself as a merchant? Uh, look, I think, yeah, you know, everything is 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 on the table. The, the, like everything, the whole industry has grown rapidly. You know, if you go back four or five years, loyalty was coffee cards, you know, or some plastic things you never bought out. 
Yeah, now they're all on your phone. The phone alone has enabled everything to rapidly accelerate. Data has allowed it to rapidly accelerate. Yeah, if we look within Meat and Wine Co, we do some really cool things like, <laughs> come back to the weather. On a rainy day, they'll know they'll get lots of cancellations. So they will push out an offer to come and get 20% off. But we also know through our system that the, anyone that lives more than three postcodes away won't come out on a rainy day. So we keep it within there. We also know generally that people over 65 will not come out on a rainy day for 20%, it's not good enough. But we also know that people under 25 will come out. So we use the data to make sure we don't clog up people's inboxes with offers we know they're not gonna take up. So we target people under 25 within these 10 postcodes, here's a 20% offer. And we'll get a much, much, much higher take up and not annoy the people that we know it, it's not applicable to. So the whole industry is taking off and, and a lot of that is smartphone driven. So because it's such a new industry, they're naturally, you know, we've even seen, you know, of the table ordering software, you know, me and you and what's the other guy, merge, right? Because, you know, you drop your costs, scale game makes sense. So lots of players are merging, acquiring, selling within the industry. So, um, yeah, we're right in that space. I'm not saying that there's anything happening at the moment, but we have acquired along the way ourselves. Um, I've understood that you're the largest loyalty company in Australia. By people, by accounts. Um, okay. Um, your uh, stock price has been very volatile over the last three months with a general downward trend. Correct. Can you attribute the, the reasons that you Yeah, look, I don't want to oversimplify things, but the market is very much focused on, on cash flow, not revenue growth, you know? If we went back three years, it was all about revenue growth. Now revenue growth is almost a negative. So when I say we've grown from two million to 40, it's, it's almost a negative. But I make the analogy, it's very much like construction, right? If I, I build a house, I sell a house off the plant, I gotta build it. So I gotta pay my subbies, you know, the council, all the things, so money's going out while I build it. Now, the two-edged sword here is, I've been so successful, I've sold another house and another house and another house and another house, but I gotta pay the subbies and I gotta roll the thing out. So, yeah, I've been cash flow constrained and we, we just raised money last week to get us through the next couple of months. So, everyone go, oh, you've gotta raise money so the share price goes down. Now we've raised it, so, I would hope it goes up, but um, but that's that's in this market, people just look and go, oh no, you're burning money, so I'm not interested. But eventually that comes out the other end, like construction, I will settle all these houses and the revenue will flow. Okay. Thank you. Question from uh, myself, Ian. Let's just talk again about that database you mentioned earlier, you know, and it, it, its value to, to, the, to the business. Maybe you can just elaborate a bit more on that. Yeah, I mean, we, look, we, we just had a meeting yesterday with a, a, a data company. They said, yeah, we'll pay you um, to send out surveys for us um, on behalf of certain clients. And it's just like a river of gold. They just said, we'll send you a check for every survey so well it's quite valuable like you never know how successful you'll be but it's it's our eyes sort of rolled a bit so we just you know we've spent the last three years onboarding all these new clients and now we have the database we haven't actually addressed that data yet so literally this week was the first company that we're looking to work on our database with Fantastic. And uh, let's elaborate a bit more on the, um, the contract uh, pipeline look. You mentioned a couple of, uh, uh, of clients where uh, uh, Cornerstone Health and email payments, they're obviously too far. Yeah, so email we haven't even started yet. Right, we signed it last week. We're just putting project teams together. We'll get 
some parts up, I think, within sort of six weeks, but it will probably roll out over the next you know, three or four months. Um, so we are very busy. You know, we're still onboarding. The yeah, RACV doesn't finish till the beginning of May. Um, then we've got Club Connect, which look after RACQ and NRMA. Again, we haven't even started that one yet. We've got to finish RACV on the 6th of May. So we have a big book of business that probably takes us through to the end of the year at the moment. Look, we, we have signed a, another automotive client um, last week and we've got a big electrical company in the pipeline we hope to sign fairly soon. So the pipeline is strong because we're right in the sweet spot at the moment. Yeah, and that Maya article will not help, will not hinder us one little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously you mentioned that you just recently raised money, which enables you to, Correct. to obviously invest Correct. that. But I think the market, to, to that gentleman's point, was like, you're growing so fast, it's costing you money, you're gonna run out of money. Now. We thought we could make it. So we, we, we look at this funding as a bridging fight just to get us to July, basically. Um, we, we didn't envisage in January EML. So we thought onboarding what we got will be fine. Now, if someone brings you a huge contract like that, you don't sort of say no. And the question here is, how is the further development of the Mosaic platform progressing and what, what impact will this have? So that essentially finishes on the 6th of May when RACV goes live. Yes, there'll be ongoing, but as I had on that, oh, this slide. Yeah, our costs will come back about 2.1 million a year after the 6th of May. Oh, actually not, not all at once, the 600 will be over time as we migrate all our clients onto that from legacy software. But we will have a drop of about one and a half million a year on development, so that saving will start to kick in after 6th of May. Now question here, uh, how confident are you that the company will deliver positive cash flows for the remainder of this year? The $64 million question. Um, look, everything we look at July, yeah, we, we were hoping April, right? We, if, if you look, and I'm not hiding it, in, in late last year we said April. But we bought so much more business on, we're building more houses, I gotta pay subbies, um, and we haven't settled on going live is like settlement for us. So it has pushed it out three months, which is why we did this small cap raise to give us the bridging money to get us through to July. Ian, it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, Many okay, thanks for your time. Oh, sorry, apologies. Yeah, okay. Expanding on your database, you've, you've got these clients, you've got customers. How much flexibility do you have across that database to be able to on sell information, or are you restricted to your clients? We're, we're very restricted. We're very restricted. So it's all opt in nowadays. But the beauty for our business is we're giving people discounted goods. Now, do you want to opt in and get these discounted goods or not? But you can't be a meta and just fly No, out. no, no, far from So, look, if I look across that sort of 17 plus million, I, I think currently four to four million-ish have opted in, which is still a big number. But again, as I said there, getting more and more, you know, we, we've added over 300,000 this quarter that have opted in. So we're continuing to work on getting people to opt in. We'll never get everyone to opt in at the 17 million. But even that 4 million we have today is a very, very good database of opted in customers. Great. Ian, many thanks for your time. Thank you.